Okay, I think we are good to go here. Hang on just a second. Just trying to make sure you guys can see my screen okay here. There we go. All right, we are close here. Perfect, there we go. Okay, guys, giving it just a second here. And again, we are live, both in our busy moms taking their health back and via Zoom here. So just making sure I can see everybody's screen or make sure I got everybody here. Great. Uh, welcome, Jackie. Hey, Jackie, if you know how to use chat, could you give me a thumbs up just to make sure that you can see my screen okay here? I just want to make sure that on Zoom, you guys have the same appearance as we do here in our Facebook group. Okay, let me see here. Not in our Facebook group. sure if you know how to use chat or not, but okay. I believe you should be able to see it. Hmm, no, it says it's paused. Hmm. Let me reshare here real quick, guys. Hang on one second. Let me reshare. Oh, you can see it, Carla. Gosh darn it all. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh no, mine says it's paused. Okay, we'll get this back here. Hang on one second. Okay. All right. Welcome, Carla. Good to see you guys. Welcome, Katie. And we will get going here, guys. And once again, we are in multiple places. So Looks like everybody can see my screen, so we will get started here, guys. So I'm trying something a little bit different tonight where hopefully you guys can all see my screen full size here. Uh, but a real quick welcome to you all and just want to kind of make sure that you guys are on the same page of what we're going to be talking about here tonight, which is all about abs, all core, everything related to the middle of your body. And I feel like the topics that we have been choosing, guys, every Wednesday for the last month, we have been doing a different live topic. And honestly, I feel as though most of these we could talk a lot longer on, but I feel as though the topics we're choosing are very important to helping bring awareness into things that we can do to help make simple changes. And, and that's what this is all about, guys. For maybe some of you, you know, I had a client a while back and her goal was 100% to have a six pack. And asking her what her strategy was and asking her what she was doing. She was actually trying to do 100 crunches a day. And hopefully you guys are going to learn why that did not work for her after this conversation here tonight. So, so welcome, guys. A quick little introduction to myself. If you do not know me, I am Amanda Villarreal, and we are a busy family. Myself and my husband, Art, we live here in Zealand, and we have five kids. And summer is absolutely flying by right now, but we are still in line with our mission of granting we are all busy, but we want to continue to provide you guys with simple and easy to implement fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies. So that's what this is all about, guys. We're going to spend about 15 to 20 minutes here each week. It's been a little varying in time, sometimes a little over 20 minutes, but I really want you to be able to, after this tonight here, for you guys to be thinking a little bit differently about how you are using your core and how we are moving. That should be a big part of how when we focus on what we choose to do for exercise is what is our goal? What is our intention? And when we start to look at those goals and intentions, I believe as though that is what creates our plan. Now, when we look at our core, there are a lot of things that we could incorporate, but I want to talk about these first three things here, which I believe kind of set us up for the rest of our talk here tonight. And the first word is stabilization. So if you hear that word when it's used in a lot of core exercises, it is because it is firing weaker muscle groups that support your stronger muscle groups. So stabilization should 100% be included into your core regimen often. Now I want you guys to do something a second, wherever you're sitting or if you're driving, be careful, even standing, wherever you're at right now, I want you to just take a second and put your hand right on your abdomen, okay? right in your abdomen, put it there. Now, I want you to feel as though if you try to pull your belly button to your spine, like you have a corset on and you're trying to knit your ribs together, that's the action we want to try to create as much as possible 
to have what we call stabilization. That's what it is, guys. We're stabilizing our spine. So pulling the belly button in and you should feel that. That is a great exercise to actually practice throughout your day is just trying to engage where we are trying to focus on. So belly button to your spine. All right, so you can relax. But again, that's a great awareness for what stabilization is. Your next one I want to talk about is functional training. Now I am big on no matter what class I teach. And for you guys who don't know what I do, I am a personal trainer. I'm a nutrition nutritionist and I teach group fitness classes. So I try to incorporate lots of variety in everything I do. But one of the key principles that we should all be utilizing is more functional training movements. What does that mean? That means, for example, we think about training and planes of movement that we use every day not just to help with our core strength, but also to help with reducing injury and to help improve our balance. So for example, doing a core movement where we create a twisting pattern, right? So let's say we're taking our arms and we are reaching up towards something. What does that mimic? Like we're at home and we're reaching for something on a high shelf. That is an example of functional training, creating an exercise around something that's going to help us move better throughout our day and in everything we do. So functional training is something we want to be incorporated in our core. Welcome, Ashley. All right, guys. And our other key thing I want to talk about here really quickly is mobility. Now, if you wanted a strong core, but you have zero mobility, you are not going to look like you have a strong core. What do I mean by that? So a lot of times we notice a lot of this kyphosis, this upper back rounding, which puts our, a lot of times, core into a flexed position. So you might feel as though your abs maybe are feeling contracted, but you are creating now a whole other set of issues. Now your upper back, you're having issues with, you know, your shoulder blades and your neck is hurting. And then all of a sudden you have, you know, issues with sciatica because your lower back is always extended. So we have to think about mobility. So we want to keep range of motion. We want to think about movements that we utilize every day to fire our core. And we want to learn to stabilize that simple little exercise we did, putting our hands on our belly and trying to engage and suck in our belly is a very key thing to incorporate in all of our training. But how can we maximize our benefits, guys, when it comes to core? Variety, 100%. We need to make sure that we are continuing to surprise ourselves and working lots of different muscle groups in our core. Now, what muscle groups incorporate our core? Now, I'm going to give you guys a picture of the main ones, but I now have learned in probably the last decade or so that core is beyond what we think it is. It's not just the front of the body and the back of the body. It's not just our back and the front of where our belly button is. I believe our core now actually encompasses your hips. So from your hip bones all the way up to the top of your rib cage is what I like to say is pretty much your core. But core encompasses a lot of things. So I believe some of us, when we think of core, we just think of the front side, but I do believe we got to concentrate all the way around to help keep our body in its best balanced place. Now, we have different parts to our core. There's something what's known as the inner core. If you can see the different pictures here, we have our transfer and our rectus abdominis. Those are going to be your, you know, you'll have your deeper muscles and then more of your surface ones. But these inner core muscles are the ones that we really want to try to engage more often because that's going to help us have more stability in basic movements, even in such things like when we are strength training. Like if we are doing a squat or example here, it says overhead pressing. So a shoulder press motion. We want to think about how to train the inner core to stay braced and engaged in everything we do. That goes back to that last word, guys. If you remember on that last, last screen there of functional, it's the same thing of thinking about how you can create a movement where you're going to fire muscle groups that are helping to enhance something that you are working on building. Now, what does current research say? There's all, all, I'm always big on research, no matter what topic we're talking about, we need to keep up because science is always changing. There's, you know, things that we're finding that we have to utilize into our workouts. And that's why I do also encourage you guys, if you, you do work out and you do maybe, you know, free online workouts, or you go to a gym, always ask for the credentials of the instructor you're working with, because you do want to make sure they're certified because they need to be staying up on what is the latest in the industry. So this study was talking about how one of the, and I, this has been actually for a while now, one of the top exercises they still recommend to create engagement in all of those areas that showed on the last picture, the Think of your obliques, internal, external, transverse, and rectus abdominis are actually bicycles. So a twisting pattern. So rotating opposite shoulder towards knee. That was one of the most 
popular recruitment for a lot of muscle groups. Another one is actually called a captain's chair exercise. Now this one you do need equipment for. This would be a Roman chair. You put your elbows up on something and you draw your knees up to your chest. So you're actually in a vertical position and you're tucking your knees, which is way more advanced. So for many people, I find they can't do that exercise efficiently. So it's not one that I like to recommend, but I do like to recommend sitting on an exercise ball to do a basic crunch motion. So if you're reading some of this on the screen here, it does talk about, you know, doing things differently and adding variety into your workout. I believe that is one of the best things that you guys need to focus on for looking at core strength. But one of the things that is old school is that a basic crunch is the best core exercise. But I want you guys to think about this for a second and feel free to guys throw any questions in the chat or um, in the comments if you're thinking of something as we're going. But how do majority of us sit every day in a forward flex position, driving, right? Working on your computer, watching TV, sleeping. So we are naturally in a forward flex position. So what happens then? Our lower spine is always extended. And honestly, that is going to trigger. Sometimes people notice the more crunches they do, they actually get more of a pooch in the front side because they're pushing their abdominal wall out instead of pulling it in. That's why doing some of these exercises like we're talking about with stabilization and mobility are going to give you the best benefits for activating where you're supposed to be. Now, your abdominals should be treated like every other muscle group. So when you wonder how often should you be doing abdominals, think of other muscle groups. It's not something we need to do every day, but there's no reason we can't on a daily basis be more aware of just contracting your belly. Okay. So again, belly button to spine, taking that simple action of trying to recruit and pulling the abdominal ball together. That is a great thing we can do, you know, as often as possible. But one of the things that we want to make sure that we are, are not doing is like I said at that little story at the beginning is we don't do them every single day. We don't target 20 to 30 minutes to them. But we want to think about these keywords. I used to use this a lot in a lot of my classes is locate where you want to work, advocate those muscles, then start your movement. So when you are creating an exercise, work through that strategy. Where am I targeting? Think about it, okay? Advocate, so start to recruit. Think about how you're gonna get those muscles to engage, then start your movement. That is gonna give you the best value for your time and help you to create the most strength you can through your core. Now, another thing that I do like to incorporate oftentimes with exercises is a simple motion of, and women, tend to understand this more than men, but a Kegel. So kind of squeezing your glutes and putting your pelvis in a slight anterior tilt will give you more of the abdominal wall contracting together. And that also is a huge support for, again, target a little towards women here, for women that have had kids and diastasis recti is extremely common, especially for people who have had multiple pregnancies, and if you don't know what that is, basically it's partial or complete separation of your abdominal wall. And a really simple way that you can tell if you have this, you can self-diagnose this really easy, is to bend your knees, lay on your back, bend your knees, place two fingers horizontally on where you feel like you might have some abdominal separation. And it can be any part of that wall, upper and lower there. And then as you start to crunch, you shouldn't be able to have more than a one to two finger split. Okay, so you can kind of measure and figure out like, all right, I, you know, all right, it's more than that. And that might be something you have to then go to a specific program to start to target that diastasis recti because it is very common. And I said, multiple pregnancies are the biggest indicator for why we see that. So again, very simple strategy. Try that at home to check it out and then start to create your program. So we have been talking here, guys. We talked about, you know, the foundations of core. We went through the muscle groups of the core. Now, here's some specific examples. Now, these are all for my online workouts, which we have now ramped up our workouts from many years ago. So some of these are older, some of these are newer. And you will see like in that first example, I was very pregnant. I think I was seven months pregnant with our third out of five kids there. But doing a ball movement, guys, is great 
for activating different muscle groups. And yes, hi, Steph. Definitely, we all need to focus on this. And you just had a baby, so you were perfect one to talk about <laughs> diastasis recti and more exercises to create that stabilization we were uh, kind of starting out with here tonight. But you'll see also in these pictures how they are all different. So this is what I want you to take home, guys. Get away from doing crunches. If you want to do crunches, fine. Incorporate them in small amounts, but utilize a piece of equipment like an exercise ball. Try different planes of movement like laying on your back, supine, legs up, creating different movements of maybe lowering the legs or lifting the legs. Then we also create an exercise to target obliques. So we have a twisting pattern. You can see there in the third picture. Then we have an elbow plank. So a great tip for planks. If you can hold a plank for more than 30 seconds and it doesn't hurt and it feels good, you're pretty much not getting any benefit after about 30 seconds, so you need to mix it up. So you can see in this elbow plank position, we are mixing it up. This was actually a 20 minute plank workout. It's a great workout, but we create all different planks, guys. We have incline, decline, all different kinds of planks. But in this one, we are tapping our toe to our heel. So we're lifting a leg, adding more of an overload to that transverse abdominus, the deeper part of your core by lifting a leg. So that also creates that stabilization effect. On that bottom middle picture, you can see we are on one arm. So again, there's the obliques again, but we are actually tucking a top arm to our bottom knee, okay? And we give modifications for all of this for some of you guys that are just starting out, but we, we wanna be able to have progressions. We shouldn't all just like, you know, how we start out in life with certain foods, we don't stick with just eating those basic foods, right? We keep adding on, same thing with our core workouts. So this is where having variety and options is very important and learning how to build off from those. The last picture you'll see there is an example. It's a mountain climber. We have a five minute mountain climber workout. That's a tough one. But the whole time your abs are engaged. Every time you're pulling your knee towards your chest, you are creating that flexed position to create core. Now balance guys is a big part of this. I am a huge component in trying to create here, whether it's upper body or lower body, more balance work. And something, again, you can just try it anytime when you are, you know, feeling like you want to test this out, stand on your weaker leg, but put your hands on your abdominals first. And as soon as you lift that opposite leg, try like we did at the beginning, put your hands on your belly, pull your belly button to your spine and see if you can just engage and hold your balance. That's a great exercise to practice. It doesn't have to be fancy where we think we have to be able to do all these crazy exercises. But the goal is to keep bringing more awareness to how you can utilize your core. Now, these are examples, guys. If you're looking for ideas of workouts, I encourage you to check these out. There's a whole bunch of them, 20-minute and 5-minute workouts. And we're continuing to expand these. And there's also an app or a website that you can go to to take advantage of the different options to help you with maximizing how to use your core. Now, I love this little statement that I wanted to share with you guys that I put together and helping you to think about beyond just I want a six-pack. A strong core will improve your technique, your strength, your stamina, and complement everything you do. Your core revolves around everything, guys. Your posture, how you move, how you sleep, how you carry your kids, how you pick up your groceries, how you get in and out of your car. Everything revolves around your core. So we need to bring awareness to that to help us get stronger. So take that quote, guys. Remember it often. Maybe even screenshot it. Hang it up on your mirror when you're trying to think, oh yeah, I really need to get back to focusing on my core. This is why. We need to really look at this as a staple of what we want to be focusing on all the way around. All right, guys, if you do have any questions, I'm watching in the chats here, so feel free to ask anything you can. Um, you want me to expand on, I'm happy to. But also wanted to mention, guys, we are going to be doing a workout in the park if you are local. This is coming up here and in about two weeks now. And this will be a great example of some core exercises that we're going to be doing and utilizing there. And this is a fun workout for all ages. We have a lot of giveaways. We have um, some great sponsors that are joining us this year. So mark your calendar for that. Bring your kids and be ready to bring your core because we're also going to be concentrating on that during that half an hour workout. So guys, I don't see you have any questions, but I am always here. So reach out anytime. If you're interested in checking out our app or our website, we have a seven day free trial available for you. So you can message me, you can email me. A lot of you know how to get a hold of me. So I'd be happy to share that with you. But I wanna encourage you guys, think about again, how you can maximize utilizing your core, 
training differently and making this a priority because it will help you in everything you do. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Give me a like, comment if you enjoyed this. And if you have an idea for topics that you would love more information on, put those in the chat, guys, because in our Busy Moms group, every Wednesday night, we're going to be doing something to help educate you and keep you guys on track with building health. So, all right, guys, have an amazing night. Stay healthy, stay safe, guys. Thank you.